Hey everyone, I'm Selena for Who is Jesus today, and I'm going to read uh, the first, uh, first Timothy chapter 2. And before I begin that, I'd like to ask out there, um, I'm sure a lot of the ladies out there, the sisters in the Lord and all over the world, are probably teachers. Many of us women have uh, gone into the profession of teaching, and that is something that has been happening for a long time. Um, even there's, um, oh, there's a profession called uh, governess and nannies, where these are professional educators, and they, which when I say that, I mean they've gone through a training to be teachers, but at the same time they are nannies. It's like you are taking care of the children's uh, basic needs as well as their instruction and development. And those are some pretty, can be some pretty uh, lucrative jobs. Uh, I was uh, thinking at one point to be um, a private nanny. They're lucrative jobs and it's like us as ladies, um, this is not to be overly stereotypical, but we, by nature, can be very uh, caring and motivational. And yeah, so there are some wonderful women that are educators, as well as men. But we're talking today about women. Yeah, I am one of them, along with many others of you. And I'm going to read a popular um a chapter. We're going to get into a popular uh, topic, quite a controversial one. In First Timothy, the second chapter, I'm going to go through this chapter step by step, and I want us to think about uh, what is being asked of us throughout this chapter, and where are we in this? Okay. Therefore, I exhort, first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions are given of thanks be made for all men. So, first of all, we're all called to a place of prayer and intercession and supplications. So, that means it doesn't say if you don't like a person or they're not your type of person or wherever they live or whatever they have done to you or your enemy, we are called to be people of prayer and to pray um, not just because it, it feels good or we, we, we like to pray for certain types of things or people, certain types of people like our friends and family, but we're called to pray, okay? And who are we called to pray for besides the people that we know around us, right? For kings and all who are in authority. Let's stop right there. So that means that um, regardless of who is the current president of the United States, we know that's, that's President Biden, isn't it? Oh yeah, I know who the president is. And, uh, or, you know, the current uh, prince of the Saudi Arabia. And you have Xi Jinping, right? And so uh, there are lots of Christians in China, so their leader is Xi Jinping, right? He's not ours. Okay, so what are, what are we called to do? And you may not be living in China, but you can still pray for the leader of China. So we're called to pray for kings and all who are in authority. And uh, a lot of times, gee, you don't like you don't like how the leader that has been put into a position. Um, it's easier to complain about them and to just say, when are they leaving? When are they just getting out of there? And I know, and I understand the feeling, but there is a higher calling for all of us uh, who know the Lord, because we're called to pray. And that prayer is to be extended to the kings and leaders and the president and those people who you did not vote for and those who you think should not be in that uh, position. But we're called to do what? To pray. That we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. 
So for all of us, we fall short, right? It's easier to complain about people who are put in uh, positions of leadership when they we feel they have really uh, failed our societies and and they're just not our favorite, okay? And so, but the Lord is calling us to a higher standard of living, and that is to be uh, led quiet and peaceful and peaceable uh, lives. And which means we won't be out there, um, you know, uh, screaming and yelling like some other people will do because they're not uh, happy with the current situation or trends in society. For this is a good and acceptable in the sight of God, your Savior. So this is an instruction from the Lord. This is a mandate, a mandate, a command. So this is what God wants of us who desires all men to be saved yes it's uh, the people that in who are out who are in Washington or uh, DC and in the Oval Office um, they do also need prayers uh, to be lifted up to heaven for their souls uh, I fall short and I know a whole a lot of us do that we have to also call and pray for those who we wish were not um, uh, in leadership or even for those that we are a fan of. They're still flawed. And so we need to pray for leaders because God desires to save all men. That they would come to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator, so there's no one else, okay, between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all, to be testified in due time for which I was appointed a preacher. So now the Apostle Paul, he is acknowledging he was appointed. Who appointed him? He was appointed by God to be a preacher and an apostle. I am speaking the truth in Christ and not lying. He is making a clear statement here. He knows who has called him. He knows his role, his position, and he is going to do what he is called to do. And he knows. He is not lying. He is walking out this in truth a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. As we know, Apostle Paul is a Jew. He's from the tribe of Benjamin. And he's the uh, Jewish apostle that's also called to be apostle to the Gentiles. Okay. I desire, therefore, that men pray everywhere. We're back on prayer. So prayer is what God desires of us. And obviously, if we're going to be praying a lot, we're going to be praying not just for people who are on our good list, but also on our bad list. Uh, I desire that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. In like manner, now we're talking about women. This is the one, everyone kicking. They read the first part, and I think they may not take in at times how serious it is that we're called to pray for kings and leaders and prince and princesses, right? Those in authority. Now, addressing women. In like manner also, that the uh, uh, women adorn themselves in modest apparel. So, modesty means not, not elaborate. Now, this is also has to be really cultural because what may be modest in one society may not be in another. I may look like I and modest um, in the United States or anywhere else in the Americas, right? Um, I may look like this is modest and I, I don't know. <laughs> Depends on what, what cities in the U.S. But there could be some places that I would show up and right now I'm not looking as modest as of a cultural norm or the social norm would suggest. But if we're thinking about also... Uh, a period in history where women uh, deck themselves very elaborately with things in their hair, with uh, a very uh, beautiful and fancy type 
of braiding, embroidery, and things on their clothes. Um, I guess, in some ways, uh, the apostle is letting the people of God know, the women, that you shouldn't go to that extreme, though. And your uh, beauty should not be based on you going to that extreme to, to really get all decked out, you know? So, it doesn't say you cannot look good, but it says modest. So, modest is, and you know, it means modest. Average, right? Not extreme. With propriety and moderation. So, there it goes. And moderation. Not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly clothing. Does this actually say that women cannot braid their hair or wear gold and expensive uh, clothing? It says in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. So our adornment, we should not want to invest so much into adorning ourselves outwardly and thinking that you know if we fix ourselves up like this we put on gold we put on pearls very fine clothing um, very elaborate uh, hairstyles that um, this should not be who we are our identity as women is how I see it should not be uh, based in just how we can fix ourselves up but which is proper for women professing godliness with good works. So look at it this way. And on this channel, I, I like to stress, I try to avoid extremism. I mean, there's a place where, you know, you, you are, are going to wake up and wash your face and don't put anything on your face. Uh, maybe not even, say, face cream. Because for you, that's modesty. And then there's a place where we go too far out to try and make ourselves over and to be someone that we are not. We don't have to live that way as women of godly uh, character. And it, it, it brings in us a balance and moderation to know that excessively adorning ourselves should not be what we are after. As women of God but to suggest that women cannot fix themselves up uh, I think that's taken that scripture to the extreme which in a lot of cases that has actually happened and some doctrines let a woman learn in silence with all submission and do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man but to be in silence for Adam was first, for Adam was formed first, and Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but but uh, uh, the woman being deceived, fell into transgression. Nevertheless, she will be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith, love, and holiness with self-control. Uh, this sounds like women are being scolded, right, for uh, over talking. In a way, uh, ladies, I have to say. It seems like that's what it is. But I've done my research on this. Okay. Um, we're talking about women speaking. There's a, a word I looked up. Um, I think it's laleo, a Greek word. In this case, speak means also talking. So we're talking about with the, the apostle is, is really dealing with us women as avoiding the excessive. Um, this may offend some of my uh, sisters out there, but I know I'm speaking from uh, on, on speaking on behalf of women and for myself as a woman. Uh, I don't deny that there cannot be some uh, tendencies at times to go way out and far out and expressing myself, uh, trying to get a point across. And God has made women smart, intelligent. Look how women are used all throughout history and the Bible. So God wants women to definitely speak and to speak the truth. So if you have to think about of the nature of God throughout a history and hindsight of the Holy Scriptures. Women were not silent. 
They weren't silent in the Old Testament, and they weren't silent in the New Testament. But we're talking about here in church, we're talking about an order of doing things. We are referring to a hierarchical way of doing things in the house of the Lord spiritually. So I guess you're thinking about maybe Greek, say Greek society, where uh, women are out out about in town and they're they're talking about so many things say socially as we are often uh, social beings and sometimes you know we have a slip maybe we're saying some things that need to be kept into the home or not said about what's happening in the church and so I feel like what the, uh, the apostle is setting um, some boundaries up this is not as I see it a mandate that women be silent and shut down and have nothing to say. I'm going to say this to you men of the world. If women in general and the women in your lives said nothing, a whole lot of nothing would get done. <laughs> I'm sorry. If women were to be silent and shut down and we don't say anything, a whole lot would not happen at all. Okay? How many things would not be functioning in our homes, schools, okay, and churches if women were completely on shutdown mode? Is the apostle, is he saying, women, you're not allowed to speak, you're not allowed to talk, but yes, it's talking about submission. So you're not allowed to speak. So some are under the a belief that it's referring to prophecies because men were speaking in tongues and men were uh, delivering of uh, the prophecies. I have not gone into that more. Some may know that more, but they're not allowed to speak and to judge prophecies. And I would say openly. Because uh, it's not that women cannot receive revelation, because of course we do, all throughout God's word and, and history. But this is about, I would say, conduct. Conduct in the house of God. But I would say this extends outside of the church when it comes to the role of women coming under submission of the man. Does not the Bible say, wives, submit to your husbands? If you don't have a husband, then as women, if we are in any kind of a, in a church setting, um, you will submit to the deacons and the elders as unto the Lord out of respect and reverence. Not out of control, but out of reverence. Let a woman learn in silence with all submission. Don't just pay attention to the word silence. It says, women be silent. Women are to be silent. Put those masks over our mouths and keep it on, right? Submission. It doesn't say you cannot learn, be smart, receive revelation, give instruction. Women have been teaching for so long. If we women shut our mouths down and we don't say anything, a whole lot's not going to happen on the planet. That's just the truth. From little girls up to older women. So, submission is important. And it says, and do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man. So again, it's not about you cannot teach people to learn. You cannot teach at a seminar. You cannot teach in corporate training. How many women out there have jobs where they teach corporate training? Uh, not just like in a classroom. You could be, say, teaching people how, people how to sell. Women teach, just like men, women teach. So are you going to tell women they should not be at all teachers? We're referring to the context. Let's stay in the context. We're talking about in the church gathering. So women need to be in that place. It's a, not an easy place for a lot of times for us of humility and submission to the men that are over our lives. We can go home respectfully and ask our spouses what 
what's really going on. And even we can express um, what we don't like or what, or what we want to change or what could have been done much better. It's not saying we don't have a, a voice, an opinion. This is about order, structure, hierarchical way of doing things in the house of God. But this extends also to our relationships with men, right? And with the men in our lives. So, in other words, we are reminded the place for us as women, it is submission to the men that are over us. Because again, we are also reminded, Adam was not the sea, but the woman being the sea fell into transgression. <laughs> so girls, we're going way back to the garden now, yes. Women have had to pay a cost, as we know, <laughs> for the transgressions of Mother Eve. It's been passed down. But if you think, based on the history of biblical texts, that God ever intended that women would not be speakers, spokespeople, uh, pioneers, advocates like the prophetess Deborah. Remember Esther, how she went before the king. She could not be silent. Esther had to speak what the Lord told her to say. And there are, think about the woman at the well. Jesus didn't silence her after that encounter. Wasn't that like an endorsement for her to go and now to tell and to evangelize her experience with the Messiah? She was not being silenced. Jesus was not on a mission to silence us women. The Apostle Paul is not on a mission to silence women that they cannot speak, they cannot have an opinion. It's just how it's done, when and where. And there's a right way and a wrong way. And yeah, living, I mean, in the United States of America, it, it takes us to this aspect that there are issues of gender. And I'm all for the the separation, that men and women are quite different. Um, I'm into, I celebrate on this channel my femininity, but I also celebrate the masculinity of a man. And so it brings me joy to submit to a man as unto the Lord. That's out of respect. At the same time, men need to love and to honor their wives and also the women that are around them as the weaker vessels that we also have a lot to contribute. We always have. And without us, not a whole lot's going to get done. So I don't believe this is about shutting down the voice of women. But it's not a speaking uh, out of term, not being disruptive. Is that a nature I'm trying to attach to us as women? I am not, but I feel that we have been given the gift of really of voicing our feelings and thoughts and um, opinions, and sometimes that's done well, and sometimes it's not. And so this is what I feel this had to be addressed to keep order. Because when you look at it, silence is being connected to submission and Women teaching is being connected to who's the authority. The authority is the man. I'm very happy to say I accept that. Now men, my word to you is please walk out God's authority and godliness. Because for a lot of us ladies, we want to be led, but we also want to be led righteously. And in love. So, uh, ladies and men out there alike, based on God's word, God doesn't have a plan to shut down the voice of women. In the last days, He'll pour His Spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. So, for those who say women shouldn't prophesy, but what did that uh, scripture say? We are referring to the order. Yes, women are being told how to present themselves a certain way in moderation. This also is a good representation of Jesus, but also of our spouses or our sons and just in general. 
Um, let women learn in silence with all submission. You're sitting in church, and imagine that setting, and maybe the ladies, you know, they're so gifted with thought, right? As we are, and we're saying things, and it, it has to, it has, you have to, it has to be put on breaks. So it's like the apostle is, is, is he, he's putting us some on break here, okay? On break. <laughs> time out. Time out. You know a lot, but time out. Time to submit. Save that thought. Save that question. When you go home with your spouse. Okay. So that's my teaching on that. And I know people will come from different views and angles. Um, I absolutely on this channel come under the authority of a man and I believe in that um, if I'm this is not a church <laughs> this is YouTube if you are if some of you out there are really kind of leery of say like the outreach that I'm doing on this channel and the ministry because I'm a woman and I'm teaching I'm giving instruction my question to you is it okay for me to teach in a classroom and not teach on YouTube God's Word or I would I, I would say that uh, I'm certainly not a scholar here but to um, inspire encourage and motivate come on guys you know that's okay if girls do that that's not what this word is telling us to do to just shut down and be silent so for those who have a problem with this, I respect that. But I'm, I feel very confident in my heart. God did not call me to keep quiet and stop talking. He did not. And he also calls all of us to pray. And to pray for those who are in authority. Whether we like them or not. Let's just take the whole scripture in its context. Not picking and choosing what we like to nitpick and to create doctrine. Is that the right spirit to approach God's word in? I leave that question to you. Okay, so those are my thoughts for now. And it's a beautiful afternoon here. You can like and subscribe. Until next time, Shalom.